Okay. We have Lance Gibson here. Congrats on the win, man. Thank you. Little uh, small adversity there in the first round. I mean, t talk me through that. And I mean, were you in any danger whatsoever? Uh, at that point? Well, I've been around the sport for so long. I, I've done martial arts since I was two years old. My first competition was when I was four. Uh, this is nothing new. I mean, you face adversity every day, day in, day out, as a human being as well. So, like, when you're walking down the street, there's adversity, obviously. There's a guy that uh, says something bad on the, on the side. You got to face those things and get through it. So it's just a small glimpse in the, in the big one, the big picture at the end of the day. So uh, we practice that all the time in training, bad positions, whatever it is. Just bounce back and handle business at the end of the day. I mean, the fact that, you know, you got knocked down and you, still, you got, what, two 3025s and a 3026, right? So, yeah. I mean, I guess talk me through uh, just the mental process of having that happen in the first round and then, then just kind of just putting the gas on and just, I mean, obviously dominating in the rest of the way. Well, it's actually kind of funny because I was just telling my dad and uh, Julia that uh, I think it's from all the years of wrestling that I thought that I had shot a single leg. <laughs> so, like, I got clipped. Which happens. Obviously, it's a it's a combat sport. If I wasn't if I didn't expect to get punched, obviously that'd be kind of weird because it's a combat sport. At the end of the day, got clipped. Uh, I had <laughs> under my impression I thought I shot a single leg, finished single leg, got got him down and handled business. Is it good to go through something like that? I mean, especially you know you're what seven fights in your career. I mean, is it good to have that happen yeah. and know that that you can work your way through it, and not just work your way through it, but but just kind of annihilate him the rest of the way? Uh, absolutely. Uh, this is my, that was my 11th fight in general. I've been, I was 10 and 0 before this. I had nine finishes, uh, one unanimous decision. This is my second unanimous decision, but uh, absolutely. I mean, I, the adversity is extremely important. It's going to build me to become a champion in the future. And it's going to, I'm going to be a well, Bellator world champion. You feel like um, he hit a point where his energy just kind of seemed to just be kind of zapped and did you know when that was you uh feel it in there? You, you know i just i said put the foot on the gas it was my my coach my julia and my dad uh, just told me to put my foot on the gas and handle business i, I the, you know what's actually crazy I, I mentioned before that my dad fought here mm -hmm. at blaisdell arena when he was 27 years old in 1997. he won by rear naked choke against a guy that was dub, double almost triple his size uh this was a bigger deal than just me being in there it was i got my whole family i got my nephews in the crowd i got like 18 of my family members in the crowd all cheering for me this was bigger than me it was uh it was my legacy as a as fearless lance gibson my, my father fearless lance gibson senior went in here and did this in the same arena practically he told me about the dressing rooms he told me about everything it, it's just crazy and it's an honor to be fighting for bellator mma uh scott coker mike kogan Jane, you guys are awesome for allowing me to come here and uh, complete my legacy. Well, not complete, do another step sure. on my legacy. So when I become Bellator World Champion, everybody's going to, uh, I'll, I'll be happy, you know? Talk about that then, because I mean, is there added pressure knowing all those people are here and knowing the history behind that? And uh, I guess, uh, how does that make you feel when, when you have that kind of, when you're writing that coming into a fight? Because you'll no, never have that happen again. You know, it's not even, I try not to take it as pressure because at the end of the day, it's, it's destiny. It's happening for a reason. I, I was supposed to fight in St. Louis. I was supposed to fight in, in San Jose. Uh, and I get the call from, from Jane and Mike Kogan that I'm fighting in Hawaii. It's an honor to come here and fight against one of the tough, like, he's a tough Hawaiian fighter. If anybody knows anything about Hawaiian fighters, they are tough as nails. So it was, it's awesome to be able to come here and fight in enemy territory where not everybody likes me, obviously, because... I'm, I'm not from the island, but uh, go out there and share the cage with the war another warriors is is amazing. And uh, the pressure at the end of the day, it's it's not pressure. It's just love at the end of the day. And uh, I use that to fuel me. I got, I got to spend the whole time and uh, all day yesterday in the pool after my weight cut with my ki my nephew and my uh, my niece and my other nephew and my whole family and just feel the love that that was what got me through that fight. You know, that, that's, that's what matters at the end of the day. What are you looking at next? I mean, uh, how quick do you want to get back in there? Got any names you want to call out? You know, what's next for you? I'm not a name caller. Uh, my name is Fearless Lance Gibson Jr. I take it day by day, step by step. I work my butt off in the, ca in the cage, and I'm a monster at the end of the day. So whoever they put in front of me, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to bounce back. Uh, I got my teammate Julia Budd fighting uh, May 6th, so... 
after that, we'll be back in the cage. So uh, I'll see you guys soon. Hi, Lance, over here. Uh, you mentioned that one of your goals is belts or gold someday. Uh, what year would you like to attain belts or gold by? Uh, <laughs> I'd like to put, retain Bellator Gold when when it steps in for when it's placed in, when it, my opportunity is placed in front of me. I'm not here to force anything. I'm here to prove my to show this world who I am. I'm fearless Lance Gibson Jr. Like I said before, I'm here to show every single time I get in that cage that I'm a monster, and I, I can handle anything. I can handle adversity. Anything anybody puts in my way, I can handle it, and I and I'm going to come back for for the neck. I know that this is a business trip in Hawaii, but are you going to take a little vacation after this one? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're here till uh, Thursday, I believe. So I get to spend some time with my family once again. I actually enjoy it because obviously when you're cutting weight, it's a little it's a little tricky trying to actually spend time with, <laughs> with people because you're not feeling the fan most fantastic. But I get to, well, prepare Julia for her fight and uh, spend some time with my family, my dad, my mom, all my cousins, my nephew, my, my nieces. Are, it's an honor. It's really an honor. Hey, Lance. Jay Wilson over here. Um, I know that you said you fought in enemy territory, but having so much family and friends here, did it kind of feel like you weren't the enemy, though, just from like having that crowd and that support and that love, like you said? Uh, absolutely. It, I like to say enemy territory, but I don't believe I'm an enemy. I think when, when two warriors go in there, there's a, there's a mutual respect at the end of the day. I know the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian fans respect me because they know I'm a warrior and my family respects Nainoa because he's a warrior too. But uh, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's a little tricky with my family there. But at the same time, I know they're here just in love at the end of the day. They're here to love and support me. And they know they're, they're, they're fighters. They're all fighters too. They, whether it's street fighting, my, all my aunts, they know about the fight game. So they're here in love and support. And uh, how much do you think that factored in that your dad fought here, like you said, same age as you and so have him be able to tell you everything that he knew about here and etc how much did that, that factor into you getting that win today oh it's huge it's uh there's no better experience than family experience or or team experience at the end of the day my dad he prepared me for everything he said hey there's going to be thousands of fans booing you i played that in my head every day when i was training there weren't people booing <laughs> but at the end of the day there were it's there's an energy to it if you, uh, I was born in Seattle. If you go to Seahawks Stadium, everybody knows in the NFL that Seahawks Stadium's a, a that, those fans, the twelfth man, are crazy. So uh, I prepared myself, and uh, yeah, it was going there and just do my job. Last question from Jay on the Zoom. Hey Lance, congrats on the uh, win tonight. You know, you were asked about when you want the title. You were asked about callouts. I'm curious. At, at six and zero, oh, four wins in Bellator. Is it time to maybe start talking about rankings, making your way up the ladder, and taking that next step against a ranked opponent? Uh, absolutely, but I, I, my my dad tries to center me, and my family, and both Julia and my dad try to center me and, and keep me grounded. At the end of the day, so my job is to fight who they put in front of me. So I don't like to call people out. I'd love to fight somebody in the top ten. That'd be great. But at the end of the day, I'm here to fight who's in front of me. I'm here to train my butt off. I'm here to come in here, and I'm here coming here to perform at the end of the day. So it uh, doesn't matter if it's top 10. doesn't matter if it's top five. doesn't matter who it is. I'm here to do my job, and I'm doing it at the best of my ability and show the world who I am. Thank you so much, Lance. That concludes our time. Thank you.